You know, I can't emphasize enough the importance of going to conventions and conferences during the summer, during your weekends, whatever, uh, doing workshops and learning from other teachers, learning from other demonstrators. This is one I learned at a ChemEd conference. ChemEd is a conference that occurs throughout, really, North America every other summer, every odd-numbered summer. And I remember, I think this was ChemEd, I want to say 89, it's been a while, um, where a demonstrator named Tick Leem showed this demonstration. And uh, it's one of my favorites, one of my students' favorites, too. Um, he didn't give much in the way of an explanation. Tick was more one to just kind of show and you know, just amaze the audience. But uh, I've worked out an explanation that I think works for it, but we'll see. What I have here is a piece of plywood, <clears throat> two foot by two foot, pardon the fact that's not metric, and um, attached to the, to the bottom of it is one of these Lazy Susan barstool swivel kind of things that's going to enable me to give this a spin, okay? And um, this is the bottom portion of a of a soda can. I put some wet paper towels, just wet with water, in the middle to act as a weight and also a bit of a heat sink, okay? And that's going to be right there in the center. And here's another paper towel. Actually, we've used these already, so they're a little bit charred. <laughs> but uh, we're going to wet these with a little bit of lighter fluid. Um, this is just regular charcoal lighter fluid, low odor, and this is a nice demonstration to show when you're talking about density, talking about combustion, energy. Okay. The nice thing about that uh, soda can, it's got a little dish there to catch any uh, extra lighter fluid that might be in there. Okay, so here we go. And we're going to light this, and as you expect, we get some combustion going on there. Note how the flame kind of flickers. There's some black soot there, as you'd expect. I spin this. No real change. But I've got a piece of screen material that I've made into a cylinder, and I'm going to position this right in the middle. And I've got concentric circles there to help me position it to make sure it's centered. And now watch what happens to this maybe 30 centimeter tall flame as I spin this. I get a <laughs> 130 centimeter tall flame. And this is called the flame tornado. Okay, and if I uh, take it and spin it the other way, of course, it just rotates the other direction. Nice little aside on this. Um, this was actually used in a, uh, in a uh, movie, um, The Ten Commandments. Use this as a special effect for their pillar of fire. This demonstration's been around for a long time, I guess since the old ancient days, but no, they use it in the making of it, where they, the scene where the chariots, uh, horses are rearing up and there's this pillar of fire that, that grows. So there it is. What's the explanation for it? Even with the little flame, you get quite a big one out of it. You see that? Well, that's a good one. I, I, here's what I've come up with for it. If we look at this flame right now that's flickering, I think one of the reasons it flickers like that is because you have these hot gases therefore low density because their atoms are moving fast and spread far apart. And those are, those are um, low density, so they're rising. Hot air rises. But above them, we have colder gases, more dense, that are sinking. Well, these two get in each other's way, like this. And those high density gases are essentially keeping that flame down. Then we put the screen on top and we give it a whirl. Now, there's a piece of lab equipment that utilizes a spinning system, and that is a centrifuge. And in a centrifuge, what happens? The more dense stuff gets pushed to the outside. Well, the same exact thing happens here. The more dense cool air on top gets pushed to the outside, and the less dense hot gas, that is the flame, can now rise up the center unimpeded. So you get this flickering flame that turns into this flame tornado. I don't think I'll get much of a tornado out of this the last little bit, but we'll give it a try. Yeah, even that little flame, look what we get out of that. There's still plenty of combustion growing there. And it's beautiful, wispy flame you get. So that's the flame tornado. Now, we'll let that kind of burn out there. Um, completely unrelated, but a nice little follow-up, I guess, is, a dem is a, actually, this is an activity. And I've got a couple of volunteers to help me with this. 
They don't know what they're supposed to do yet, but I'm going to explain it to them. These are two acid bottles. Um, they're no longer, they've been rinsed out, but um, they're completely filled with tap water, and they're going to have a little race to see who can empty it the fastest. So you get to pick the bottle. The left handed one. Okay. And you get to pick the basin. Okay, there we go. It doesn't really matter. We're going to, now, you're thinking of a strategy, and you're thinking, okay, I'm just going to pour it in there. But you know that when you pour, you get that chug, chug, chug effect. So they're thinking, hmm, what to do? So I'm going to let them think about it a bit. No breaking the bottles, by the way. You can't, like, you know, <laughs> head butter or something like that. That's, that's cheating, okay? The bottle has to remain intact, and the object is to, to empty the water as quickly as possible. So, got your ideas? On your mark, <laughs> get set, go. Okay, this is interesting. We've got two very different strategies going on. We've got someone who said, for heck, heck the, the, the chug, I'm just going to have it straight up and down, let gravity take its full course. He's trying to avoid the chug, chug, chug by pouring slowly, but uh, it doesn't seem to be doing much for that. Okay, so a clear winner here. <laughs> but I am now going to take on our winner. Thank you for your worthy effort. <laughs> and we'll put these off to the side here. Just to save time, I filled up some new ones. And to show you it's not rigged, go ahead and pick the bottle. I knew she'd reach for that one. <laughs> what you just did was the second best strategy. That is straight up and down, let gravity take its course, and let the chug, chug, chug. But I'm going to do the best strategy. I'm going to give you a three-second head start. So on your mark, get set, go. Okay, it was a worthy effort, but I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, so now, <laughs> the connection between these. Thank you, by the way. Very good. Very good job. These weren't completely disconnected. That was a bit of a lie. There's an obvious connection, and um, I took advantage of it. When I do this with my students, we'll maybe do this at the beginning of the class, talk about gas density, various things, and then follow up with this, and they they've now don't have that connection. They're, they're coupled, but with some space in between. Um, and here it is. Think about it. We had two things trying to pass each other. A low density thing trying to rise and a high density thing trying to sink. And they got in each other's way. The flame flickering, the water chug, chug, chugging. And the solution to both of those, give it a spin, forcing the more dense stuff to the sides and allowing the less dense, uh, dense stuff to come up the center unimpeded. What explanation am I using that for? Both, right? And it's especially beautiful because one involves fire and one involves water. We're talking about the elements here. And uh, I don't know, I just, I think this is a neat little combination. I was shown this one by Tick Lean. This was actually one shown to me by Ron Perkins. And I guess what I'm adding to it is just the idea of, hey, putting these two together because the explanations are very similar. And both of them are nice examples of density. Thank you.